Welcome back, friends. As we move from Friday at 10 to now Tuesdays at 1. And I'll tell you why we did that. Everybody was saying that they couldn't make it to the 10 o'clock show, and they were finding it challenging to find me and listen later on demand. So there's so many changes here at hand. It worked out serendipitously that we are now Tuesdays at 1. So the idea is grab your lunch, chill out, and hopefully be inspired. The drive is about people, places, and things that move us forward. And we are so fortunate today to have Larry Bingaman. Bingaman. Did, did I say it correctly? That's correct. Okay. You can feel free to bust my chops <laughs> if I if I don't no, as we go forward. Fine. So <clears throat> all things that move us forward. You have an incredible background. And now you are the CEO of the Regional Water Authority mm -hmm. in New Haven. Correct. Serving 500,000 people. Thereabouts, right. yes. So my newsletter that went out to everybody said, Elevate Humanity, Conscious Business, and Water. So one would think that, and I'm going to jump right into it, Larry, okay. uh, before I, before, only because I've got a lot of questions. Okay. And Kate told me that we had to stick to a tight hour. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you want to stay oh. the whole hour. <laughs> Hope we can cover it all. <laughs> so um, conscious consumerism started with um, probably back in the 70s, right? We started recycling, and now we're into organic food and, you know, no GMOs. And mm -hmm. so we could say it started from a consumer pattern. Mm -hmm. And we could, and we're not going to get into politics today because we know that can be crazy. Right. But there is such a thing in our country as businesses that are more conscientious. And it falls on the heels of what the drive is all about, which mm -hmm. is mindful living, mm -hmm. living on purpose. So... Before we get into your background, I want you to tell me, because everything I've read about you just reeks of how truly important that is to you. Yes. And, you know, one would assume water, we should be conscious about what we drink. Mm -hmm. And we could talk about all the droughts and the people that don't have good water. But I really want to know from you what that, what that passion and what that drive is, because you have taken it really beyond what I would call a typical CEO that's doing conscious business practices today. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about that, and then tell me a little bit about how you got from Aquarion to where you are now. Okay. Well, thank you. It's great to be here, Denise, so I look forward to this conversation. Well, first of all, I'd, being in the water business in general, it, it allows me to, to serve my community and to give back because we're providing a vital product for the sustainability of the community. It sustains life itself mm -hmm. uh, and contributes to the economic vitality of a, of a particular region. So by being in the water business, I saw it as an opportunity to really serve mankind, to serve my communities uh, in, a, in a higher way. Mm. So uh, as the longer I've been in the business, the more important I saw that that was. And it's really something I've become very passionate about, that idea of community service, giving back, uh, helping to elevate communities and helping them do better. Okay, so that being said, you've instrument, you've um, implemented a few programs in your organization mm -hmm. to elevate humanity. Can you tell us a little bit about those and what what they're really doing and the results you're seeing? Well, we've we've uh, I joined the authority in 2009, and then we uh, started a, a strategic. We put together our first strategic plan mm -hmm. based on the uh, balanced scorecard, which looks at a business from four perspectives, which are the uh, customer, mm -hmm. employee, the financial viability of the firm, and your internal processes, or how efficient you operate and serve your your various stakeholders. Were you efficient when you when you took uh, this leadership role at your firm? We've uh, we've come a long way. I'll okay. I'll say it that way. <laughs> we've come a long way. And uh, through that first strategic plan, uh, we've seen a lot of terrific results. Okay. For instance, um, through the work of lots of, of uh, the employees in the workforce, we've reduced operating costs, increased efficiency, reduced our debt service cost to about uh, for about $12 million. Now, mm -hmm. The benefit to uh, our customers, some of your listeners, is that that has translated into mitigating rate increases by about 12 percent. I hope you guys are listening. Okay. So that had a direct benefit, and that's what we saw. If we could operate more efficiently, we can provide better customer service mm. and at a lower cost. So we've been able to mitigate some rate increases uh, doing that. We've also... Do you uh, think your consumers have heard that message? 
or did they just gingerly open up their bill one day and go, wow, I haven't had an increase? Like, how are you getting that message out? Because, you know, I think so often nowadays people are, um, they have a, a default notion that, you know, all big business is bad. Mm -hmm. And what is it doing to me now? Yeah. And how can I get around it? And there's such a movement in our organization, I mean, in our, in our current world, mm -hmm. for conscious living, mindful living. So how do you take some of that negative perception, especially around consumers these days right. that are, you know, in those, you know, Facebook fights over GMO mm -hmm. foods? Mm -hmm. How do you steer that? Because I... I when I was doing research on you, I got that sense that, like, wow, I wish I lived in New Haven. And this was my water company. Well, we wish you were there, too. So, <laughs> But, uh, okay, anyways. <laughs> well, um, uh, one of the things that the, uh, the water industry is not one that has typically in the past talked about itself a lot. It was oftentimes called the silent service. Right. Because when customers turn on their tap, yeah. uh, the water's there. And if a water company is doing their job uh, appropriately, it's clean, it's fresh, it it's, uh, meets all the regulatory standards. So people don't think about it. Right. So that's why it's called the silent service. Mm -hmm. But what we've started doing is, is to talk to our uh, customers through newsletters, through various programs, and say, these are the things that we're doing to operate more efficiently. This is how that benefits you, the customer. These are the kind of investments that we're making in order to ensure that the water system is reliable and provides good service. So it's constantly reinforcing the message because people forget. Yeah. They have a lot of messages that they hear on a daily basis, so we have to remind them. Right. That's, uh, I grew up with a, in a family entrepreneurial business uh, working with my grandmother, and she'd always say you're only as good as your last customer and your last yeah, that, dance, that's, right? That's very appropriate. That's right. So let me ask you, that's, we're talking about external customers there. How about the internal ones, your employees, yes. that you really need to steer their mindset? You mm -hmm. know, again, the drive is all about shifting and steering right. and staying positive and reframing situations. And um, over the years... I think um, with the lack of what people perceived as corporate loyalty, mm -hmm. you might have had a shift in productivity. But I, again, reading about your organization, it seems to me that you guys take a nice focus at what you do for your employees to kind of get them to um, also consciously move forward with whatever right. their jobs are. Tell right. me about that. Well, as you probably know, uh, s studies that have been done recently show that only 25 or 30 percent of the workforce is engaged. Yeah, that's sad, isn't it? It, it is, because that means 75% of the employees either don't want to be there or yeah. they do things that actually undermine what the uh, corporation or business is trying to do. Right. So we've worked real hard to improve employee engagement uh, within our company and to solicit ideas from employees on how we can operate better, uh, some innovative ideas to uh, increase revenues without increasing water rates. And an example of where that payoff is, is that when we put together our second five-year strategic plan from 2015 to 2020, mm. we uh, decided to make that a bottom-up process. So we opened it up to the entire workforce to participate in giving us their thoughts and ideas on what we did well, what some of our weaknesses were, some ideas to grow and expand the business and make it better. Mm. We had 52% of the employees participate in that process. Which is a huge number. That, that is huge, and that is so atypical mm. uh, to have that many employees. So those employees were engaged in the, in the business, and they continue to be engaged. And I suspect that it's probably even larger than that because their colleagues knew that their friends were involved in that strategic plan. So if they weren't involved, they, my friend was. So right. they're, they're probably even more engaged now than they were before. So um, as water is a silent service and, and you are running a company uh, consciously, some other C-level executives, of course, at your level, were you ever met with resistance? Like, hey, why are you doing that, Larry? Why are you wasting? Why aren't you making more money? Why aren't you trying to maximize profits instead of, you know, because that is the banter, yeah, right? Are th so did you, were you met with resistance? Because I know that in my own business, anytime I do anything too far out of the box, mm -hmm. some of my contemporaries are like, Denise, that's just a waste of time. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, the Regional Water Authority is a nonprofit organization, so we don't have the pressure to earn a profit as, oh. uh, as your for-profit companies do. But uh, the current leadership team I have is a terrific team. 
Um, they all had the same philosophy of giving back to the communities and to working for the benefit of the customers. And when we hired many of these individuals, there's five individuals that make up the team, and some of them are new hires within the past few years, we wanted to make sure that they fit what it was we're trying to do. And those that are longtime employees had that philosophy. So we wanted to make sure that the leadership team was aligned first and foremost with what we were trying to do. And our two boards are absolutely aligned with that kind of thinking that we need to be able to operate efficiently, serve our customers well, and give back to the community. So is it hard to find people of your similar mindset, or are you thinking that people are, and for what reasons are they moving in that direction? Because this certainly wasn't the direction, say, 15 years ago. That's, that's true. It, that is something that has evolved over, over time. And we, we go through a, a stringent, straight, um, a screening process to ensure that we hire employees that have that same sort of philosophy that they're not there just to make money, that mm. they really have a broader uh, purpose in mind. So we've gotten to be very specific about the way we hire employees to make sure, again, we're bringing the employees on that would support our mission and vision. So they want to be part of that 52%. So they they want to be part of that 52%. That's right. So tell me, you said when we opened, when I was being very long-winded, that you are very passionate about community service, as I am. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your background. I read that you were a marketing director at Sikorsky. Am that's, I right? That's correct. Well, take me before that. Are okay. you a Connecticut native? No, I, I uh, grew up in California oh. and went to school out there. I, sh I should have probably known that, ladies, right? <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, and uh, my, my uh, first job was with a, an international petroleum company. So I became a corporate nomad for a few years. I uh, was transferred from California to Texas. Oh. My wife and I were there for a couple of years, and then we were transferred to, uh, to New Jersey for a few years, and then I was transferred to the uh, New York office, which was, which was what brought us to Connecticut in the early 1980s, and we've been lifelong, it almost feels like lifelong residents uh, for some 32 years, um, and ex with the exception of five years that I spent in, in Massachusetts. But while I was with, um, after, uh, with Texaco, I was uh, recruited to join Sikorsky Aircraft and I went to work for United Technologies and its Sikorsky Aircraft Division. And while I was there, I was recruited to join Aquarion Water Company headquartered in Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, gee, this is, this is interesting. It's a different business, um, something completely different than I hadn't thought about. But they were doing some very exciting things at the time. And I had a chance to start a new department and uh, work in marketing and communications uh, there. So it looked like a great switch, and it proves that oil and water can mix. So <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I grew up in a mobile gas station. Oh, so okay. Yeah, <laughs> one, I, of our, one of the competitors. One so. of the competitors. Yes. Okay, so where does the passion come in? Like, were you taught community service from your parents? Like, what made you become? Because I, you know, spending, we have a 12-year-old. Mm-hmm. And, I, and my grandmother, once again, would always say, you can never be a success until you make someone else a success right. along the way. Right. So I try to instill that even in our employees. You know, mm -hmm. It's like leave a little bit on the table for someone else. Right. Give a little something that you, that you really want to hold on yeah. to, give it away. Yeah. Or you know, scare yourself and try something you wouldn't normally do. Mm -hmm. like, so where does that come in for you, and how do you let that flow down in your leadership at... Uh, RWA. Well, when I was uh, young, my, my father was an entrepreneur. He, he owned uh, several businesses, uh -huh. and uh, my mother uh, supported him and working with him, um, and they believed in giving back to the community. So I had an, an exposure to that as a, as a young child and, uh, and, in, and in college. Uh -huh. um, some of the courses that I took in uh, s uh, the social sciences talked about giving back and making sure that you uh, uh, contribute uh, rather than just take. But it was when I got into business and uh, went to work for the oil company and saw how important it was that it become part of the community where it, where it operated. And mm -hmm. that became even more apparent when I went to work for Aquarion Water Company because they were very involved in the community as well. So I took some of my early childhood learnings, what I uh, was exposed to in college, uh, early on in my first job and applied that at, at Aquarion. And it's just growing from there. You know, I. I can't thank you enough. I'm gonna. I'm getting the signal that we got to take a quick break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, I want to hear a little bit more about your community service projects and then how you, how you lead and get your managers to lead in that same mindset as we see the world turning and evolving. Sure. Thanks. We'll be right back, okay. guys, Good. in about a minute. 
When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. While the temperatures are cooling down, the fall bite is heating up. Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait that are abundant in the Long Island Sound. If you love the New England coast during autumn, this is the time to be on the water. The latest from Shimano, Quantum, Avet, Hoagie, Phase 2 and more are in stock and ready to go at the dock shop. And don't mind those fall breezes with jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece from Grundens and Stormer. The dock shop will keep you warm and dry. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The dock shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Have no fear. HAN Network's Fast Frights movie contest is here. Can your film make the cut? Submit your three-minute scary movie today for a chance to win a DJI Phantom 3 drone. Sponsored by Milford Photo. The only thing to fear is missing the deadline. <laughs> Does buying a car leave you feeling like you're chasing your tail? Head straight to Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram and take car buying in a whole new direction. I'm back. Okay. When you experience. So let me tell you a little bit about the drive because it bears repeating now that we're on a new time slot, 1 o'clock Tuesdays with your lunch. The drive is about all things that move us forward great people, places, things, and ideas. It's not typical, oh, my God, something terrible is happening in our world. We know that mm -hmm. already. There's enough of that going around. So what I want our listeners to know is that after they've tuned into the show, whether live or later, hopefully it moved them forward. They mm -hmm. tried something new. They got unstuck. They were having an off day. They started to smile because mm -hmm. we always use a little humor. Yeah. I think humor can solve a lot of things yeah. because it helps you reshape. And hopefully it motivated them. We get stuck in our own heads, mm -hmm. and so we don't do community service. And what happens is we get more stuck in our heads. Right. Sometimes when you go out to help someone less fortunate or just help a worthy cause, it helps you shift your energy. When you shift your energy and you give back, you become more productive. Right. So my goal of this show, Larry, um, is to let people move forward. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we hear so much about I'm so tired of getting on Facebook and hearing how many crazy negative things about GMOs. We know GMOs are this, that, and the other thing. But instead of going at it from a fear-based mm -hmm. or an anger-based, I want to reshape it. That's the purpose of my show, mm -hmm. not GMOs. Great, great purpose. Not yeah. GMOs. Okay. Okay. So oftentimes I do invite CEOs on because sometimes someone with that level of credibility and that level of experience to a regular Joe can be scary. Mm hmm but on my show, we get an opportunity to talk to you and you put a real face to your background mm -hmm. and what you're doing, and you're not so scary. And you're actually hopefully motivating other people to maybe think about uh, business in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, whether it's nonprofit or big business, there are many companies and there, there is sort of this wave of CEOs similar to yourself. Um, that are doing things consciously, mindfully. And yes, everybody's in business to make money. I'm going to tell you a quick funny yeah. story. One day I was working for a nonprofit that builds homes in the area. Mm -hmm. 
for people that actually have to contribute. So they don't get the house for free. Mm -hmm. They have to contribute labor. And I'm not going to mention their name right now. So I was the chair of the organization, and I went down to a fancy hotel in Greenwich, and I said, but we're a not-for-profit. Can't you do much better on these room rates? Mm -hmm. And the manager said something very wise to me. She said, but Denise, we are for profit, <laughs> right? And uh -huh. the world has to move. Right. Right. <laughs> so for profit isn't a bad thing. And nonprofit is very important. Mm -hmm. And you are doing some really important things in your community with, I think you've got five programs listed on your website and how you give back. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the one that comes to your head first and what you love about it. Well, I, I think one of the best programs that we have going is our uh, school education programs. We have a full-time educator who will go into classrooms and she'll teach uh, students about water science, the environment, why protecting uh, the water sources are important, why it's important not to pollute. Mm. And she'll, she does that throughout the school year. And then she has also developed uh, lessons in a box in case a teacher wants to provide the lessons themselves. Great. And then we also have some lessons on our website, rwater.com. So if, if, rwater uh, so if your listeners would like to go to the, our website, there is a, a place there that has some lessons. And uh, through the in-class teaching that she gives and the uh, lessons in a box, we probably contact close to 10,000 students through the course of a, of a school year. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this year, by the way, we are celebrating our 25th anniversary of that education program. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And we estimate wow. that we've probably have touched more than 300,000 students over that, over that 25 years. So think about that exponentially. You've got 300,000 people potentially that, not polluting water and telling at least their friend, yeah, hey, don't exactly. throw that down there. So you can double or triple that yeah, number. So we're going 900,000 that, that, today. That's, ex okay. that's exactly right. I'm loving that. So, and then in connection with that, we um, have a relationship with Common Ground High School in New Haven. And uh -huh. Common Ground High School is a, is a school that um, uh, students are eligible to apply to attend. And it focuses on environmental science as well. So these are students that have a, an interest in that area. So once a year, we run what's called a water boot camp. And during the summer, the school will send to us 12 to 15 of their top students. Mm -hmm. And we'll spend a week with them. And they will learn about what all the different departments of a water utility does and why it's important, again, to protect water quality. And they'll go out into a stream, and they'll do sampling. So this is a terrific hands-on program for students to really understand the environment and why it's important to be good stewards of that. And when I read about that program, it also seemed like you were really trying to cultivate leadership. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that's important. I, I uh, uh, believe it's important for students to learn that everybody has a responsibility for themselves and their, and their actions. And they can be leaders or they can be followers. And that's a conscious decision that they have to make. So when we kick it off, we talk about that. And when we uh, conclude it in the uh, graduation ceremony a week later that we give to them, we talk about their accomplishments and what they did and, mm. and stress that importance of being leaders in, in their own way and, in, and however they can be with their friends. Yeah, it's so important. Again, I chime in with, you know, uh, parenting a middle schooler and mm -hmm. teaching leadership skills and doing the right thing when nobody's looking. Right. That's exactly and valuing, right. And, you know, we can always do the right thing when everyone's watching that's, us, that's right. right? But doing it when nobody's looking is right. a whole other story. And not necessarily uh, just doing the cool thing. Mm -hmm. So I salute you on that. And there was also a program for girls and ladies, water bottles. I read something about that. Uh, okay, you're going to challenge me. I'm going to have to look through my notes. New Haven Fit for, um, uh, it had tied in with M Michelle Obama's Drink Up campaign. Well, yes, we, that's a, a program that we have uh, started to promote um, people using tap water more because people have become convinced that bottled water is higher quality. Not true. Well, um, I won't comment on, on that. I know, I we, put you right on the spot but there. We, <laughs> we meet some very stringent federal and state standards uh, for our, our water quality. And many people use bottled water because, one, they believe it is higher quality, and there's the convenience of the bottle. But when you stop and think that a 12 ounce bottle of water could cost between a dollar and a dollar and a quarter or more, mm -hmm. um, and tap water is, only a, is usually less than a penny a gallon. So it's a terrific bargain. It's very high quality. 
Uh, and many times people say, well, you know, I don't like the taste of chlorine in the water. Well, you know, to get rid of that, it's very easy. Just let it sit in the refrigerator in a container overnight, and the chlorine will dissipate. So you've That's got, a nice tip, everyone. So you've got cold water. It's less than a penny a gallon. You can put it in any water bottle. Why does it dissipate? Uh, it, it's a gas, and it just dissipates um, through exposure to the atmosphere. I ho- okay, that bears repeating, guys. You're going to leave it in the fridge for a whole entire day, and the gas is going to dissipate. That's a, Okay, that's so something chlorine. that happens at our house, because I grew up in the Berkshires, mm-hmm. and we drink tap water there. Okay, still, that's, that's good. I don't like plastic bottles, and some of my friends in the industry are going to get mad, but you know what? It's true, right? It sits in your car, the plastic heats up, mm-hmm. it goes into your water, and then you drink it. And right. then we wonder why... You know, we have onsets of various cancers because we've drink it, we've drank hot water from these crazy plastic bottles. Mm-hmm. And you've seen on the Internet where we could circle the entire planet how many exactly. times? Exactly. Okay. So, so that program was to promote the drinking of tap water. And if you want to, you know, buy a stainless steel container mm-hmm. that's safe and carry your water around in, in that. So we've been trying to get more people to think about tap water as being kind of the alternative mm-hmm. to bottled water. That's a, that's a new marketing campaign yes. coming up the road for you guys. Yes, we're working hard on that. <laughs> okay, I love that. Yes. So you just helped me out so tremendous. I, this is one tip that should have moved everybody forward. Yes. You know, the next big one is many of my listeners are big pet people, and you do a lot with your we, pet water. We, we do. We, act, we work with uh, community uh, groups to put in uh, dog fountains, so to speak. I and, hope you're listening, Evelyn. Dog fountains. And uh, to, let them, to let the dogs have access to the water as well. And we've, uh, we've, we've done several projects with that, as well as, as, well as food farms. Oh. Urban food farms. Tell me about those, because that's very big here well, in Connecticut. It, it is. And when an uh, urban food farm is uh, interested in um, uh, starting one or to elevating it, um, many times we will put in a service line that will allow them access for water. So that will be our contribution is to put a service line in from the water main to connect to their, to their garden. So they'll be able to grow fresh, healthy food and have an ample supply of water. But this is within the communities you service, of correct, course. Correct. Right. Okay. Yes. So hopefully some of the community water services down here are listening. Well, I'm sure you have some of our customers are, are, yeah. in, your, are in your listening area. Yeah. So, oh, for sure. Yeah. But um, I meant more specifically yeah. South County. Okay. Okay. So that's great. Now you do all of those great programs. Do you think that helps the employee? It's got to help the employee contribution, morale, uh, conscious mindfulness, and that's got to boost that 52%. Well, absolutely. You know, one of the basic, t- one of the key principles of conscious capitalism is that a business should have a higher purpose than just making money or profits. Yeah. So tell me about that in depth. So that higher purpose is really giving back to the communities. It's engaging your various stakeholders. It's um, when you say stakeholders, tell us what you mean by that. Well, that could be your customers, your employees, your vendors that you do business with, um, the communities in which you operate. And so the first, the first tenet of conscious capitalism is to have a higher purpose, to really think broader than just making money. Okay. The second one is to understand the interdependency of your stakeholders and to never make a decision that benefits one stakeholder group at the expense of another. So you play fair on everybody. So you play fair on everybody. And I think it's important to think about that interdependency because we know that businesses can't be successful without having... Uh, successful relationships right. with their customers, their employees, their vendors. At least not anymore. Not anymore. Everybody has, it has to be a win-win for everybody. So right. that second principle is very important. The third one is, is to have conscious leadership. That means that you take the principles of leadership and you uh, bring it such that you promote the conscious, ca- the conscious culture, you have, um, you create a vision that uh, employees can buy into, the leaders model the way that they want everybody to act, they um, enable others to to, uh, do their jobs better, they remove obstacles, and everybody's accountable. People say what they're going to do, and they do what they say. Mm. So that that conscious leadership is very important. And then finally, it's having a conscious culture. It's really having that philosophy spread throughout the culture, because without having those first three principles part of the whole culture, it won't work. So we try and instill that, that higher purpose in our employees, uh, and one of the ways we do that is to have them give back to the community through participation on boards or for different walks like the American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association, United Way, 
So that's the way we try and promote, another way we try and promote that higher purpose. So it kind of feels, when I'm listening to you, it's like a corporate loyalty reversed from the ground up. You're mm -hmm. through conscious uh, capitalism or business, you're getting the buy-in at all of the stakeholder, playing nice with everybody. I think everybody gets a sense that they're valued namely the employees and even the vendors. Remember yep. the days gone by when vendors weren't highly regarded right. and now they're strategic partners. So that seems like a 24 hour a day job. Like I don't imagine someone like you is taking a rest. Is that true? Well, <laughs> I try and get a few hours sleep. So. so what do you do outside of being a corporate leader that kind of helps you stay balanced, if you will? Well, one of them is community service. Okay. I, I serve on, uh, currently I serve on the uh, Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce uh, board, and I'm the, the uh, current chairman of that. And uh, that helps me provide balance because that's giving back to the community uh, in another way. But I also, I like to, uh, to exercise, so I jog, and that gives me uh, about 45 minutes in the morning where I can clear my head, think about lots of things yeah, long okay. term. Spending time with the family and our three schnauzers also helps. You have three. Keep no have wonder three you have the dog program. <laughs> 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 that helps you keep balance, I'll tell you. <clears throat> um, so, if you were going to tell um, the audience like one very powerful thing that they could do to understand and not make it like a negative word, uh, conscious capitalism. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you want them to know about it being, like, what can they do to participate? They're not necessarily an employee of yours, but to better understand it. So they don't feel like it's just all rhetoric. Good, good question. And we are in the process of uh, starting a conscious capitalism chapter in, uh, in Connecticut. Mm. Um, it'll be the first in the state and, and in uh, New England. So if people are interested in becoming part of that movement, um, they can send me an email at lbingaman at rwater.com, uh, or they can call us at 203-562-4020, and we'll be glad to put them on our mailing list. So when is that going to take off? Is you have well, a certain in, start we're, date? We're in the process of talking to the, uh, to the organization, so it'll be a few months, mm -hmm. but we're starting to gather that mailing list so we can keep people informed. So you've got a lot of great things going on. We're going to take another quick break, mm -hmm. and we're going to come back in a few minutes, and we're going to hear about what's next for you okay. at uh, rwa.com. Alliance. We are an industry leader in coordinating transportation for large events such as corporate road shows, conferences, and special events. Our team of experts understands the dynamics and logistics of high-pressure situations and complex arrangements, all within a rapidly changing environment. Since 1999, we have added charter jets, event management, and personal protection to our range of services. Mention this ad for $25 off your next round trip reservation. Alliance and you. Together, we can achieve the extraordinary. 855-546-6996 or AllianceLimo.com. The fall bite is heating up. Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait in the Long Island Sound. This is the time to visit the New England coast, and the Dock Shop can get you outfitted with the latest fishing gear, jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece. Boater, beach bomb, fishermen simply love the New England coast. This is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Kaikout Rockefeller Estate is Westchester County's top cultural attraction and is now open for the season. Don't miss out. Go online to HudsonValley.org to plan your visit. Take a drive out to beautiful Sleepy Hollow, New York and enjoy Kaikout's stunning architecture, breathtaking gardens, expansive art galleries, and commanding Hudson River views. From world-class art by Picasso and Warhol to expertly tended gardens, there's something for everyone. Kaikout Rockefeller Estate a National Trust for Historic Preservation Landmark. Back to school means back to busy, and Stewart's Market can save you precious time by stocking all of your favorite essentials under one roof. For a healthy start to school, we have all the ingredients. Walter Stewart's, your family-owned fresh local market, 229 Elm Street and at stewartsmarket.com. Alliance. We are an industry leader in coordinating transportation for large events, such as corporate road shows, conferences, and special... Snarky. And uh, so I'm known to be, you know, um, a person that's got a lot of humor and uh, 
and I got a lot of responses. Now, mm. talking about open rates in a MailChimp or uh, Constant Contact, in my industry, an open rate that's good is 17%. Mm-hmm. I just want you to know we smoked it with 32 oh today. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's terrific. <laughs> so terrific. Hopefully, we're going to hear yeah. from Han, uh, HAN Network that we've got a lot, we've got a lot of views, mm-hmm. and we are going to post this up uh, so l- everybody can see it later on our LinkedIn. And uh, where else? Uh, Kate? Okay, we're going to see it on yeah. HAN.network. I've got to get used to saying that. Uh, Rob's not here to tell me that I am not saying it correctly, so you guys got to keep me on track. Anyways, um, it's been such an interesting conversation, and I have to say that it feels very true, like conscious capitalism is an okay thing. I don't know if I would have felt that way 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. How about you? Well, I think you're absolutely right. The conscious capitalism movement actually started about eight years ago by John Mackey, who is uh, the CEO of Whole uh, Whole Foods Markets. Yeah. And Doug Rausch, who is the uh, past CEO of Trader Vix and a management consultant by the name of Raj Sisodia. And they started the movement eight years ago because they wanted to bring the philosophy of, uh, that businesses can do more. Right. And they need to be more. And they need to give back. And so they started the conscious capitalism movement. And since then, it has grown. And there's a lot of both small as well as, as, well as large businesses that are part of that. Whole Foods is one. Costco is another. Um, the uh, Tom Shoes is another, yep. Panera Bread is, a, is one, and they all have their individual ways of giving back to the community and practicing the four tenets. And transparency. And, trans- and that's very important is transparency and practicing the, uh, the four tenets of conscious capitalism. So it's a movement that's, that's growing. Well, the thing about it is, too, um, I'm doing some consulting for another client, and we talk about what we're posting on social media, and mm-hmm. we had a discussion yesterday. It's like, the network owns, you know, the news, right? Mm-hmm. And so they can spin it any way they want. Mm-hmm. But we, as personal branders, own the news. Mm-hmm. So we could say, you know, I'm the president of whatever. It could be factual or not. Mm-hmm. But I think that cutting through all the clutter, fast forward today, people are able to better discern because they have so many places to get information. Yes. And now the new experiential marketing backs that up. So you have so many places to get your information, Mm -hmm. and now you have so many ways to experience it. So I think it has changed in the past 10 years. And we know where you are now, and and we know that some great things are coming up. What's on the list of intentions for Larry? Let's go five years out. Well, um, I'm, I'm currently uh, enrolled in a, a Ph.D. in management program uh, specializing in leadership. Just in your few spare minutes, yeah, Larry? You know, <laughs> had, had a few hours a night that I could uh, put to a different I love use, it how so. people nonchalantly <laughs> say crazy things. I'm just getting my Ph.D., Denise. So, okay. So uh, doing that and, and uh, when I ultimately decide to uh, leave the Regional Water Authority, um, I can't see myself sitting at home, so I plan on teaching. Wow. Um, and going t- to one of the local universities. So that's that's kind of what's in store in my next life, next career. And if you were going to cast a magic ball vision, where is conscious capitalism going next? What's the trend after this? Well, I, I think that it's going to continue to grow. And what I would hope is that more and more businesses would subscribe to that. Because, you know, the the... Capitalism has really gotten a bad rap in the last few years because you see a lot of companies that just focus on one particular stakeholder, like shareholders, and they, and it's at the expense of all of their other uh, right. stakeholders. It's employees, it's their vendors, and quite frankly, through all of that, capitalism has gotten a bad rap. And when you stop and think about it, capitalism is really one of the greatest concepts that have ever been invented because it, it is ethical. It is good, it's noble, and it, it really does, and it is heroic because it lifts people from poverty into, uh, into a better state of life. Well, first of all, in the state of Connecticut, we have more women entrepreneurs uh, per area than our whole country. Right. And I, having a few businesses and, and have been an entrepreneur for probably way too many years, mm-hmm. uh, I believe, you know, capitalism is okay. I think, again, it's, as you said, the rap it's given. Mm-hmm. And so... The purpose of the show is to illuminate things that maybe people need to reframe, right. reshift, a steer. Um, so that being said, and on the heels of almost closing, when you come up against obstacles, and I don't, it can be obstacles you take out of the way for your uh, stakeholders, if mm-hmm. you will, but even obstacles in your own life, in the most challenging ones you've ever had. How, what, what is it 
that you do as a leader that you have in your bag of tools that allows you to shift and make good decisions or quick decisions or some or so that the result is productive like I can tell you how I shift my energy. I want to yeah. hear how you do well, yours. I'll tell you, no person can be an island, and that's something that I learned early on in my career. And as I said, I've got a great leadership team that I work and collaborate with. And quite frankly, when I'm facing a difficult decision, I'll bring those leadership team members in to the fold, and we'll talk about what, that, what those difficult decisions um, are and what are the ramifications of it. So it's that collaboration with the leadership team, uh, sometimes with key managers and quite frankly with uh, with our boards and I think by doing that we're able to make good decisions that benefits all uh, and moves the organization forward to keep that higher purpose so you know Facebook wasn't born a success overnight Microsoft etc and uh, you certainly have quite a background and a, su a big success it wasn't overnight mm -hmm. so from a listener individual point of view what are we going to tell them today that will impart some leadership or get them unstuck or move them forward? So they're not at the Ph.D. level yet, but they're thinking about it. Right. What are we going to tell them? Well, I, I think that, uh, one, when you're thinking about something, you need to just do it. And I thought about uh, going to graduate school for a few months, and I said, you know what, this is something I want to do. So I think it's always having that, what's the next, the next great challenge, to think about how you're going to approach it, and then jump in and do it. I think that's very important. We are going to say thank you. It has been an honor. It has been a pleasure. I hope that um, with all the new stuff that's kind of coming up, that you'll rejoin us in 2016 and give us an update. This is Denise DiGregoli with The Drive, Tuesdays at 1 o'clock on HAN Network. We'll see you back, and you can tune in on our website as well to listen and see us uh, in a rebroadcast. Thanks so much, everybody. Have Thank a you. wonderful week. Thank, Thank you, you, Larry. Pleasure. Very much a pleasure. Thank you. Very pleasure. Thank you.